Never try to be better than someone else. Always learn from others. And never cease trying to be the best you could be. That's under your control. Anybody can be a coach, and a good coach can coach anything. This kid's going to be the best kid in the world. This kid's going to be somebody better than anybody ever knew. The mindset of a coach can belong to anyone. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Pain is temporary. They ask me why I teach, and I reply, where could I find such splendid company? Hey guys, welcome to the eighth episode of the Coaching Mindset Podcast. I'm Liam O'Neill, the Prove It Guy. And I'm Gary Wallace from Core NI. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about alcohol, how it affects your system a wee bit, and more importantly, the aftermath of it all. Um, so yeah, we'll get into it. The reason that we got into talking about alcohol today is because Gary went away on a skiing trip. If you listen to whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to our last podcast, you'll know that we did that over the phone because he was gallivanting in the world and I was not. Uh, so then he overindulged, which I'm just going to tell you now because I'm a tell tit tell tit when we get in it. And so we thought we'd get into that. So do you want to talk a wee bit about your ski trip first, and then we'll get into the effects and things like that. Yeah, well, first of all, the ski trip was just awesome. Um, we were very, it was, it was, it was brilliant. Um, <laughs> I'm just not going to lie, it was unreal. Uh, but every night and the deal we had in our chalet, we used, we got our food. So we got our breakfast and then we also then got our evening meal. So it was a three course meal every, every evening. It was perfect. There was an English couple there. They were actually cooking for us and it's just really good hearty meals, stuff you need after day skiing. But with it, you also got a unlimited amount of wine. <laughs> now, the quality of this wine was questionable, but it was still alcohol. And it kind of got me on to thinking. Like, I thought you were going to say it was questionable, but it was still wine. Yeah. Yeah, well, true. But <laughs> the uh, thing I got was a lot, like there was 11 of us away. And every single person, like at some stage, had a huge hangover. But it didn't want to be that annoying guy, but I wasn't. I didn't once have a hangover. Now, I drank probably the, the same amount at times, but I think just from previously what I've done and what I've learned and um, just my own training and my own body that I was probably able to, to handle that alcohol a lot you, better. You're thinking that because you're healthy, 90% of the time you're, you're eating healthily and looking after yourself. You can afford then to go away on a blowout and the body doesn't react like it would if you're if you're not training and if you're not looking after yourself, what you eat, things like that. Is that what, is that what you think happened? Why you... Well, more or less, you know, whenever whenever you kind of read in it and the whole thing, you know, with all these myths about having, you know, something in your stomach, because what, something like 20% of alcohol is, is absorbed through your stomach. Yeah. Fact of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but, and I'm not going to lie. I did not hold back. Like I ate and I ate and I ate on that ski trip and the, the guy, the host was loving me because he was just feeding me, feeding me. And some people were, were picking at the stuff. Some people were passing the stuff out. And you, when I, when you look back at it, those are the ones who really suffered the next day. The other thing that I was quite good on, um, because I was the water carrier, I drank a lot of, of water yeah. too, during the day. And also then too, when I was drinking, I always made sure I did have a few glasses as well. And the night before, I always would have went for the glass of water. It, it's very easy, especially with your, if you're on a summer holiday or you're away, that you just forget to drink water. You're out of your normal routine because everything's happy and everything's like this. But with skiing, I always took the, the rucksack with me and I always had at least two bottles of water in there. Now we shared a lot of it, but it was easy for me just to grab and, and drink away. Those two things work just before we pass on to fast running. The, you're saying the 20% of alcohol gets into the bloodstream through the stomach. So whenever you have food in your stomach, you're sort of stalling that. The alcohol has been absorbed by some of the food as well as it's being digested. So some, some of it takes longer to get into the system. So then you don't uh, get drunk as quick or and some of it's um, expelled through... So it has to go through the intestines and get absorbed that way. So it takes longer as well. When that's taken longer, the 20% that's went into the blood is being broken down. So you're not bombarding the blood and then the heart's pumping that around the whole system. You're not bombarding it straight away. You're sort of giving it in two levels. And then the water again, like everyone who drinks or everyone that's seen alcohol or worked in a bar or anything, 
you know that if you water down alcohol, it's not as strong. So whenever you're watering down, that's why different proofs for different alcohol. Um, so with you drinking a lot of water, you're watering down the alcohol as well. So it's not going into the system as pure as it would have been if you didn't drink the water. So that's the reasons why those two have helped. But I think just the fact that you're also fit, your body can handle a lot more abuse than someone that's that, that doesn't train or doesn't look after themselves as well as like yourself. Yeah, no, again, I suppose really it, it just sparked something that I, I did read up on a bit about it and, and that was some of the common things. It was all to do with like you, you process alcohol depending on your gender and meals supposedly process a lot better, a bit like that diluting thing because they maybe have more water in their body compared to females and alcohol is actually diluted. It's not that they can take it better, it's more so that it is diluted. You know, your age affects it, your your health, your size, yeah. everything as well. Um, like I remember even writing a few articles uh, before when I write for the Ulster Herald. You write for the <laughs> yeah, I write for the Herald. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. So, they, they should sponsor us, shouldn't they? I think. Yeah, the Ulster Herald, we talk about them a lot. Maybe. Big shout out to Mark McKelvey then too if he's listening. He's, he's my he's my inside guy. Mark's also my inside guy. He does all my work. So Mark, you're the man. Sponsor us. <coughs> yeah, we're going to tag you in this post, Mark. <laughs> Sponsor us. Um, but yeah, it, the thing with the with alcohol when it gets into your system as well too, it's like it's dead calories. And you always hear this about people when when they're any on any health goals or anything. It's like cut alcohol out because it is dead calories. And it does a number of things. For every gram alcohol, it's like worth seven calories, whereas carbs and, and protein um, are worth only four. Plus as well too, whenever you break that down, you can't break that alcohol into anything. It can just be poison. Some, some of it is used for, I remember reading up to before, some of it can be used as a fuel, but very, very limited amount. And it takes so much longer to break down. Whereas if you're breaking down your carbs and proteins and, and everything, you're getting the, the nutrition from that. You're getting your energy. You're getting the protein to help and build and repair. So let's not go too much into the scientific thing as well with it. Um, but all that happens. And the big thing then too, that the body actually slows down its metabolism, its metabolic rate slows right down because it identifies that there's something in the body that shouldn't be there. Something like poisonous, like alcohol. So it needs to get rid of that before your fat burning metabolism and everything gets switched back on so again. Just for people that don't know, what is a metabolism? Well, your metabolic rate is, is more so, if you're sitting stationary and you're doing nothing, you know, your metabolic rate is the energy it needs to, just for your vital organs, for everything, everything to move. So the fitter you are and the healthier you are, maybe the more muscle that you have, your metabolic rate is going to be higher, which is a good thing in terms of if you're looking for fat loss and you're looking to be a bit leaner and also in a way too it means you can eat a lot more yeah <laughs> so you consume more food which for me is a good thing i like food yeah you can consume more but it's because you're doing more outside of that to maintain your health uh since we're going on i think we, we've talked about the way it affects the body and stuff to a certain extent and we're some of the science and we're avoiding some science as well but i think just remembering too that it's like it depresses people people mm. so if we are talking about training just at the minute for example if you wake up the next day hung over and it takes you a couple of days to recover depending on how indulgent you were you're not going to eat the way you eat normally you're not going to train the way you would train you're just not going to be like the hangover person isn't isn't your best self that's not the person that you would send into an interview or on a first date or send to the gym in general because you know they're not going to put in the effort that you would put in normally so even if you overlooked all the science like there's not many people that go on a crazy binge or go drinking and function well they might think they function well it's, it's the same as people that tell you that they only drink a wee bit at night and you get chatting to them and they drink more than like the, the units that you're supposed to drink or that you're allowed to drink like they end up drinking more so say if it's five to five to six for a guy and four to five for a for a woman then they they don't realize how much that actually is like i remember chatting to a guy that said he only has a couple beers and then half a bottle of whiskey and he used the word only repeatedly when he talked about it. so it's only half the bottle and it's only this i could do that but that's that was every night that was every night <laughs> I. And that was a lot but he wasn't considered 
like to be an alcoholic or he wasn't considered like a lot of people wouldn't even have known that because he functioned really well but he, no matter how well he functioned he wasn't functioning as well as he could um, and then w without it and then you think of the mood swings that people have and the anger that they have and things like that so I think even when you take away all the science it's just not I know you can go away and party and that's, that's great but that's your scenario is completely different than the person that's just sitting at home binge drinking and again, this all relates back because we, we talk about coaching and anyone can coach. And if like you're a parent, you're coaching children. And if you're an employee, you're coaching the people that you work with, things like that. So if you're going in after a night of binge drinking or a weekend of binge drinking, and then you're, you're not functioning exactly how you would or you're not functioning. Your mind's just not switched on. Your central nervous system has taken a, a battering for however long it is, how much alcohol that you've had in the system. So then whenever you do go to coach, even if it is just trying to get your kids up in the morning to go to school or picking them up or, or whatever it is, you're not, I personally don't think you're firing on the, the same way that you, you, you would be if you didn't. I'm not anti-alcohol or anything, but I just think that. Yeah. As always, we should point out that Liam actually doesn't drink. Um, can we maybe ask why? Why do you, why did you decide not to? Have you tasted it before? Or? I, I have never drank. I've been, I'm 21, I claim. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I'm 33 and I I found training I never trained when I was younger I know I do a lot of training now but I never trained whenever I was at school I didn't even do PE and then when all all my mates found drinking and, and and partying and things like that I had found training at that exact same moment and in my head drinking like I'd seen them after their first night of drinking and it just I just knew it wasn't going to be useful. I also started glass collecting when I was 13. So I'd seen a lot of people on different drugs and, and been in different scenarios with people and seen fights break out and people doing stuff they wouldn't have normally done on, on day to day. So it just didn't make any sense to me. It didn't It didn't make sense mentally to do it from seeing the, the way people, people are with alcohol. And then because I was training, I knew that it would hinder my training. I think I listened to... Arnie chatting in an interview one time and he talked about alcohol being bad or might have been at the time when he was talking about drink your milk all the time <laughs> like all of them Hulk Hogan everybody drink your milk oh, sponsored by milk <laughs> I don't know <laughs> yeah, to be fair they, were, they all had milk moustaches it was a beautiful time uh, so I, I just never I never got into it but I have been around a lot like I, whenever we used to go out and hang out in the Grange Park or whatever and people were drinking I would have been the only sober person in, in the the place i was probably madder than the rest of them because i would have stayed out with them all night and they would have been at least they would have been partying i would have been training over in the corner like a looper but so because i i've never drank i don't know what it's like i've never had a hangover so a lot of people tell me i can't explain what it's like to have a hangover i, I can look at the science i can find out what it does and i can give you tips how to improve your hangover but i'll never be able to tell you what it's like Unless I decide to start drinking, which yeah. I can't imagine that I will. But if I ever do, it'll be an interesting podcast that day. Yeah, well, that do it, do it when you're done. <laughs> but I think the big thing is is with you is is that you can go out like if, if we weren't went out in the night and I was drinking and you weren't and we had to do something the next day. There's a there's a probably a chance I could probably still function, but there's a, a higher chance that I won't function as well as you. Yeah. So and I think that's the side that you can come from with, with people to say look. Yes, I'm not anti against alcohol, but if I mean you would both went out and had the same night and you can have fun and do whatever, but the next day I can still go and train. Yeah. And I can do because I I've I've actually I've actually changed my drinking habits too. It be small things, like really small things. I d I don't I don't actually drink a lot. Um if I was drinking I do actually enjoy you know, like a glass of, of red wine. A wee Shiraz mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. a wee Malbec. A wee Malbec. <laughs> it's all in. It's all in. <laughs> but again, for me, and again, it may sound geeky, but it is well too. It's a health benefits. It's a better choice. I still want to drink. I still enjoy the buzz I get from getting a few drinks in and going around and being at the buzz in the bar and getting that all in without. And I've been out a lot of times sober from playing football and stuff, and I've had some brilliant nights. Yeah, you know it's 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 all to do with your mood, but obviously alcohol makes you feel better. Um, we simple thing too that I did makes is, you think you feel better. Yeah, well, true, <laughs> true, but it does. Uh, another simple thing I started to do was 
I don't really go only if I have maybe one or two, but even at that I won't I don't really drink pints anymore. For it's first pints of all are, pints are mad. They are, it's like mental. You, you wouldn't sit and drink twelve pints of water even just like it's exactly. Simple. So like I would drink bottles now. If I was going out I would drink bottles of beer. I know you're you're taking a few mil off, but you could you could drink it and by the time maybe your mates are drinking um a pint of beer, you, you know, you're just sipping away at your bottle. And I've tell you what, I have enjoy I enjoy Christmas so much more. I enjoy even being away in the ski trip and just drinking wee bottles and just the next day I felt so much better for it. And again it's that whole thing, I don't know if it's diluted down and we can get into the science of it if it's the bubbles or whatever coming through. I don't know, but for me, I feel so much better just drinking bottles. I feel more in control. I don't feel as sick. I would always get like a bloated stomach and the I, bloated stomach comes from the the fact that everyone's so cautious, especially over in this country, about how you pour everything, that we maintain a wee hen, we maintain as much of the bubbles, uh, we'll just call them the carbon dioxide. If you don't release the bubbles in the glass or in the bottle, then they have to be released within the system. So when you drink them, they're released within your stomach. So that so that's why people get bloated and start to feel sick because all that carbon dioxide is being mixed up. So if you do... Um, get rid of some of the bubbles before you drink it. Like remember you used people used to do that, they'd like slap the top of your yeah thing and it would spray out everywhere. So if you do that, at least your body like that if the if you don't do that within the bottle, then your body has to do that. So that's why people get bloated and, and feel sick because well they're creating like a chemical reaction within their stomach and then it's filling with gas. Yeah. I think it, I think I know we kinda it might be a wee bit off in our normal podcast, but <laughs> it's a whole idea of of coming up with all these simple things like again you don't drink but you're not anti drink I do drink I do maybe don't don't drink a lot but when I do it's about making smart choices you know simple things you hear it all the time but eat a good meal stay with your routine if you know you're going out that night make sure you eat well yeah. you know I know a lot of people for example if you wear weddings like no I don't touch food I'm not going to either doing cartwheels like uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> because the body just get the alcohol just gets in the bloodstream a lot quicker. You know, make sure you're well hydrated. Um, even so simple as uh, reading this before about drinking green tea. Now I drink a lot of green tea, but it's just the the antioxidants and stuff that go into your liver and help just break down the alcohol. Yeah. So when the poison comes in, again, like not a hundred percent certain on the science that you can research that a wee bit more yourself. But again, it's an wee benefit that helps. As soon as you come in as well too, people have their own remedies about um, what they drink, but bare minimum, get water into your body. Yeah. Because then itchy can function the next day. I find too that the next day is the big one. Um, especially like if if, if uh, me and Josh were doing something, is get up and just go. It's so hard to try and even get out. But see, and for me, get that fresh air. Get uh, that sense. Get those endorphins raised because your whole hormones are all over the place. You know, you want to feel down. You want to feel depressed. You want to feel like you can watch movies all day. You're just going to peg out. It's comfort food. It's everything. But get up and get out. Um. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a bit of like on... Of a, I I think that since you're telling people that they should make... Take... take decisions like eat make sure they eat and drink water and things i think other things like just for your own safety like if you're going out have a plan for how you're getting home don't just go out and try to wing it and then stand outside some nightclub at three o'clock in the morning trying to work out how you're going to get home you know like whenever i teach the some of the courses we talk about tar- target hardening so make yourself a harder target for uh people that are trying to cause trouble or, or trying to fight or trying to take advantage of people if you know like you have your taxi booked or if you have someone that's going to come and collect you or if you have plans even like buying wee flat sole shoes if you're a female instead of walking home in the freezing cold and your bare feet because your heels are too stupid for you to walk home in you having those plans so that so that you know how you're getting home where you're going so that you, you are creating a safer environment so that if you do because it's all well and good having all these plans and then you start drinking. Like I did 13 years of bar work. You see it all the time. And I've heard it a million times. I went in for one. And they're the guy with their tie off <laughs> swinging from the roof later on. Or the woman that's lying under the chair because she's had 50 shots because all her mates wanted her to do shots. And she didn't She didn't want to be rude. Like we, People talk about how 
it makes you more confident and you get Dutch courage and things like that. But it's, I, I disagree with that. It makes you more stupid. And because you're more stupid, you aren't afraid of approaching people. You aren't afraid of doing things because you're not thinking of the consequences. So you're not smarter or you're not more confident. You're just stupider. Yeah, it wrecks your judgment. Like. Yeah. So then you're going out and you're taking 50 shots and thinking that you're going to be fine the next day. And then you turn into a nightmare. Like I have met some of the nicest people in the world. But when they're drunk, I will not go anywhere near them and some of them were close friends as well and they just knew to stay completely out of my road whenever they're full because I don't want to go near them and the easiest way of example that is everyone knows somebody that shouldn't be allowed vodka yeah or shouldn't be allowed whiskey like if there's a drink that everyone thinks you should not be allowed and then you want to be addressing that so whenever you're looking if you are going to go drinking and things like that I'm not again we'll keep saying it I'm not anti-drink I am anti-drink driving I think that the law that you can have a certain amount to drink and drive is bullshit. You should just, there should just be none. Like no, no drinking at all. Don't drink anything. Because like we said, you might be amazing at two pints and that and perfectly fine. But then you've had a busy day. So you haven't eat, eaten all day. So your stomach's empt, completely empty and you're tired from working and stressed and you go and sink two pints. That's more alcohol in your system. It's not about how much you drink. It's about how much alcohol's in the system. So then you're not on the same level as you would have been if you had had a big meal before you went. So I just think drink driving just should be yeah, none at all. Um, but I think, again, because we've, we've gone off on we tangents, bringing it back to the our podcast, it is about coaching and we believe everyone can coach. Drinking alcohol isn't going to help you achieve any of the things that you want to achieve. I, I personally don't think, unless your goal is to become an alcoholic, <laughs> then... It's not really helping you towards everything. It might be like a wee glass of wine in a, in a in a networking event just to be like people I've noticed over the years. I would carry, even if I, whenever I used to drink Coke and things, I would get them to put it in a glass that looks like I had vodka because people are more comfortable around, when they're drinking, they're more comfortable around people that are drinking than when I, I hate when people introduce me and say, oh, he doesn't drink. You can feel people close up because they think I'm taking notes as if I care what. Yeah. What nonsense they're going to talk about. That's a good point, cold. actually. Especially if you, even if you are out having a sober night, you know. Because uh, it is, it, it, if, you, if, you're, if you're out or if you are in a, in a networking place where, you know, do you have something in your hand that's like a glass with, with Coke or whatever in it, then, you know, even if even if you don't particularly like it. But as well, too, with the coach, and like, I find from an early stage and when I worked in the university, um, I was very fortunate. Like, I was out of college straight and working in the university then and up in Korean and I was you like were a stew. <laughs> oh, no, you were a stew like no because it was a totally different college but uh, <laughs> but I used I to work talented. I worked uh, like um, like shift work so there might have been days where I was off early or I was working late and it might not be done the next day like I would have been on it you know I was young I was out there I was I was but then I still had to try and be professional I used to come in, and I'm not joking, it used to take me like 15 minutes to write the simplest of emails. Like, my body was not functioning. And after a while, I just went, look, I cannot continue to do this. And I like, oh, the phone wasn't on silent there. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't continue to do this. Um, I would need to be professional. I need to do it. And as well, too, it's, it's the same with, with coaching, especially with me, with coaching kids, because... I find that you do get angry, all these emotions come through and everything. You just really have to consider what you're what you're doing. Um I know all the advice we're probably given here now is is common sense too, but I think it's good just to hear that common sense and if it clicks something with you going, Oh, you know what, I never actually really thought about me having my bottle of wine and I don't function until twelve o'clock the next day. So then first three hours of work are just totally lost and I'm feeling sorry for myself whereas you could say well I'm, I'm going to actually have my wine but I'm going to make sure I'm going to have my wine with a, a really good nutritious meal I'm going to keep myself well hydrated and, and I can enjoy that wine and I can enjoy um, watching it with a movie with whatever it may be and the next day I can get up and feel a lot better and I'm able to go through my coach and I'm able to go through my work and I'm going you know what I had a few drinks last night and to be honest, you might know this, but I, I think for me, it's whenever you have a few drinks and you wake up the next day and you're going, I had a really good night, I had an awesome night. And I feel great because 
I think as well too, when you're in a bad mood before you drink, you're just actually adding to that. So when you wake yeah. up the next day, you're feeling great, you wake up the next day and again you're probably more depressed. Or the other fact of if like that's why really one of the reasons too I think I didn't actually get a hangover in skiing. Because I was going to my bed laughing and I was waking up laughing. The, it was a mate of mine we were rooming with who I used to live with in, in Colerain, in Port Stewart. And like we were just chatting about the good times, blah, blah. And he would get up in the morning and he would just make me laugh straight away. And I was like, right, bang. We were like raving at the breakfast table and all too, which was pretty <laughs> cool. Like the guys were big into music and it was pretty awesome. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really simple advice, um, probably common sense. But hopefully it triggers something that you go, you know what? Kind of see what they're talking about. Hopefully they don't think, what to you, dickhead? What are they talking about? They the, don't problem with, the problem with common sense is it's not all that common. So common sense is good. Like you go to a dentist and the dentist tells you you should brush your teeth at least twice a day. That is common sense. But you don't turn around to your dentist and say, sure, I knew that. Like yeah. it's good It's good to be told that. <laughs> it's like it's good so, so common sense, the problem with it is that it's not all that common. Uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. I think that's enough talk about you. Indulging. Yeah, let's go to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? What? We, by the way, what time is it? It's like this is our this is our earliest podcast. It's like yeah, it's, quarter to nine. It's quarter to nine in the morning, and he's wrapped in a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wrapped in a blanket. My feet are cold, and but we've also I, we've done our boot camp, and me and you smashed our uh, our own workout. We have in the morning. Productive morning. I'm going to take a photo of us with you and your blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Uh, so I think we'll, ra- we'll wrap it up there. Thank you again for listening in on our podcast. Um, and again, I'll pass you on to Gary and he can explain. Yeah, so once again, guys, thank you very much. Um, thanks for the feedback for people who, who did give it. And guys, again, we, we want to hear from you. We want to, to know what you want us to talk about. Um, if there's any other topics we are going to have a few guests now we've got a few of them lined up and we're going to be bringing them into our podcast if you think there's somebody you want to hear more from we can actually try and get out and connect with that person and try and get them onto our podcast but yeah yeah so remember we release it every thursday at six o'clock um, on our facebook page and uh, just thanks again for listening and hopefully hear from you soon <laughs>